Hi, my name is Sam Millingworth and I'm a senior lecturer in science communication at the University of Western Australia, where I lead the science communication unit with my colleague, Dr. Heather Bray. At UWA, we offer a master's level unit in citizen science, which looks at citizen science from an interdisciplinary perspective and examines key themes and issues such as participation, motivations and engagement, appropriate technologies, data quality and management, intellectual property, ethical issues and policy implications. One of the key issues that we talk about is developing meaningful partnerships and connections between professional scientists and citizens. And in this video, I'd like to guide you through 10 principles of citizen science that all such projects should try to adhere to. These guidelines were developed by an international community of citizen science practitioners and researchers who set out their shared view of the characteristics that underpin high quality citizen science. Principle number one. Citizen science projects should actively involve citizens in scientific endeavour that generate new knowledge or understanding. Citizens may act as contributors, collaborators or as project leaders and have a meaningful role in the project. In other words, citizens aren't just data collectors. They're not just there to be used as an analogue computer. They are there as part of the process and they're there to generate knowledge and understanding, to be granted agency and to be actively involved. Principle number two, citizen science projects should have a genuine science outcome. For example, answering a research question or informing conservation action, management decisions or environmental policy. This might at first appear to be quite constrictive because it might be that a group, for example, in the educational sector, want to do something that's quite aspirational, but doesn't necessarily have a scientific question at its core. However, in this instance, the intended outcome could be reframed as a measurable objective. For example, increased participation in scientific activities amongst a specific audience. Principle number three, both the professional scientists and the citizen scientists should benefit from taking part. Benefits could include the publication of research outputs, learning opportunities, personal enjoyment, social benefits and satisfaction through contributing to scientific evidence, for example, to address local, national and international issues. And through that, the potential to influence policy. So one of the benefits might be that the people have fun in the process, but these benefits should be made clear from the beginning and should not be overstated. They should also be benefits that all the participants actually want, rather than what the professional scientists might think that others need. Principle number four, citizen scientists may, if they wish, participate in multiple stages of the scientific process. This may include developing the research question, designing the methods, gathering and analysing data and communicating the results. I would argue that this is the principle that is most often overlooked by large scale projects that label themselves as citizen science initiatives. However, if citizens are only involved in data collection, then really this is crowdsourcing and not citizen science. Working with citizens at all levels of the process is not just a box ticking exercise. It is an effective way to ensure a variety of methodologies, opinions and experiences are accounted for, thereby granting agency to those involved and helping to devise more innovative solutions to the scientific outcomes that are being addressed. Principle number five, citizen scientists should receive feedback from the project. For example, how their data are being used and what the research policy or societal outcomes are. Keeping citizens updated on the impact of their efforts is not only ethical, it is also likely to lead to stronger communities and encourage them to participate in the project over a much longer timescale. Principle number six, citizen science should be considered a research approach like any other, with limitations and biases that should be considered and controlled for. However, Unlike traditional research approaches, citizen science provides opportunity for greater public engagement and democratisation of science. By openly admitting and discussing with citizens any issues with data validation and calibration, scientists can help to positively build trust between these two publics, which is beneficial for both the citizen science project in question and also science more generally. Principle number seven. Citizen science project data and metadata should be made publicly available and where possible, results should be published in an open access format. Data sharing may occur during or after the project unless there are security or privacy concerns that prevent this. 
This means that certain confidential information, such as participants' email addresses, should not be shared, but where possible, any data from the project should be made freely and readily available so that others can use it. As well as being ethically sound, this also means that the data could potentially be used by others to advance scientific knowledge in new directions as well. Principle number eight. Citizen scientists should be acknowledging project results and publications. Some citizen science projects have all of the citizen scientists listed as co-authors in any journal articles that result from the initiative. However, this is not always possible because of the strict policies that some journals, incorrectly in my opinion, have in place. In such instances, the professional scientists that are involved in the project might either consider publishing in a journal that allows for the citizens to be listed as co-authors, if only collectively, advocate for the journal in question to change their policy, or at least list the citizens in the acknowledgement section of the proposed article. Principle number nine, citizen science programmes should be evaluated for their scientific output, data quality, participant experience, and wider societal or policy impact. Communication and evaluation of projects could include scientific outputs, data quality, participating experience and learning, knowledge sharing, social benefits, capacity building, new ways of science engagement, enhanced stakeholder dialogue and wider societal or policy impact. Basically, all citizen science projects should be evaluated and reflected upon and where possible, the results should be used to benefit the wider society. And principle number 10. The leaders of citizen science projects should take into consideration legal and ethical issues surrounding copyright, intellectual property, data sharing agreements, confidentiality, attribution and the environmental impact of any activities. It is essential for the leaders of these projects, be they professional scientists, citizens or both, to think about all of these things. How will the participants be impacted? Will participating in this project affect their rights? How will the local environments be affected? It's the responsibility of the citizen science project leaders to carry out a full risk assessment and cost benefit analysis that accounts for the potential impacts. These are the 10 principles through which to live your life as citizen scientists and as the creators of citizen science projects. To truly be considered a citizen science project, any initiative should have at least considered how they attempt to meet each of these principles. Taking into account all of these principles, the Australian Citizen Science Association offers a really neat definition of what citizen science is. Public participation and collaboration in scientific research with the aim to increase scientific knowledge. Such participation and collaboration should be possible through all stages of any citizen science project, from design to dissemination. Ensuring that it does will help to further bridge the gap between professional scientists and citizens. Thanks for listening.